This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrish and you are listening to Capes and the Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. That's right, kids. You saw the signs coming, and here it is. Welcome to the first episode of our brand new show, The Devil You Know, <gasps> the Daredevil Podcast. I am... Yeah, but the format's a little different because they were talking the TV show. Which we'll probably get to. Uh, yes, we'll talk everything there, though. But yeah, so shout out to the boys. Make sure you uh, go listen to Full Stream Ahead. Yes, go to, yes, on the Capes and Lunatics. Yes, it's Full Stream Ahead. But, yes, for those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, I am Phil. And the podcaster without fear. And she who has killed more men than Electra. It is. Hey, y'all. It's Lil. Hell Kitchen's other angel. You know. Nice. AKA Foggy. I can be the Foggy. It's fine. No. <laughs> Definitely a... not Karen. Oh. It will get there, sir. That's right. Told you. So, you know, we're basic. So we're starting off with like one of the best runs. Well, um. <laughs> again, it kind of covers the origin, so it makes sense for an episode yes, one. It makes sense. And we talked about it yesterday. Daredevil, the man without fear. Yeah. From 1993, 94. Yes. Uh, what, October to 93 to February 94? Yes, yes. And, and was... it is an origin piece, but surprisingly, this quality comes from Frank Miller, and it's got art by John Romita. So, Junior. Junior. <laughs> but no, I was reading in the back of this, um, the trade I have from a few years ago it was saying they were saying this this was originally planned to be a graphic novel yep but then they like uh i guess they uh can't you know they didn't they weren't doing the graphic novels anymore so then they just made it a mini series smart honestly which then graphic got novels will not save the industry it never it never had the potential in the 90s 2000s or now looking at you i'm not starfire and that whole plan over at dc oh <laughs> so yeah i think it was smart that they uh went ahead and makes that idea but it was but it's like yeah it's like no no graphic novels they made it a mini series which then got collected in trade <laughs> many many times but no i mean again yeah again this started in 93 i think it was uh you know frank miller hadn't gone completely off the rails yet <laughs> exactly and that's why that's why i made mentions like it's high quality from frank miller <laughs> this and was I, his peak time I, oh look at him go <laughs> Look at me. Couldn't help himself, guys. That's right. I don't know Are how long. prescription? No. <laughs> I can't see a thing, get it? <laughs> Seeing red. <laughs> Including the soundboard. So I don't know how long I could do this. But, uh, yeah. So I think Frank Miller does better with, like, origin stories. You know, like Batman Year oh, One and this. Well, it's like with the with the origin stories, you kind of have a roadmap. You kind of know where you have to be at the end of it. I mean, when he does those, but few- it also gives him room, wiggle room to kind of uh, embellish and flourish what he likes. Yeah, but I mean, I just mean with like you know, like Dark Knight Returns, those future stories. It's like basically mm-hmm. he can go wild and Brutal. do whatever he wants. Yeah. We got, so what you're saying is you got to have a roadmap and rein him in a bit. That's what you're saying. That's the key to for getting the most out of Frank Miller. Exactly. Oh. I was going to say, I can't see my screen when I do that. <laughs> oh, perfect for this podcast. Exactly. All right. And honestly, for an origin story, what better style is there than film noir, which Frank Miller is, like, known for? <laughs> oh, yeah, I get the, the film noir feel for this. And, you know, it's a get, it, you know, and he, it's dealing in, like, that gritty gangster sh- under, underbelly of the streets thing, too. So that really, everything just kind of coalesced into a perfect storm of storytelling. Mm-hmm. For this particular uh, arc. Oh, yeah. All right. So should we get to the first one? Let's do it. We got five issues. <laughs> yes. The Man Without Fear, number one, October 1993. All right. Again, these might be up. Yep, this is the long uh, summaries. All right. 
Matt Murdocker is up in Hell's Kitchen. <clears throat> a police officer is lecturing a number of children in the neighborhood because they were using a fire hydrant to cool down. Matt, wearing a mask, rides by on his skateboard and steals the cop's nightstick. He hides it in the gym his father, battling Jack Murdoch, trains in. His father is a boxer, but tonight he is alone. He's holding a photograph, crying over a woman named Maggie. Matt helps him to bed. Aww. Aww. At the gym, Jack is being beat up by Slade. The fixer is trying to offer him Slade? a... Slade? <laughs> fixer is trying to offer him a job as an enforcer, but Jack refuses. Jack tells them they can kill him, but he won't work for them. Fixer tells him he won't, he won't only kill Jack, but he will kill his son Matt as well. Jack continues to box, but when he isn't in the ring, he's collecting for the fixer. Jack wants his son to study and make something out of himself, not to be anything like him. Matt comes home from school one afternoon, proud of himself. A boy was picking on him, and he stood up for himself and fought back. Jack is upset and hits Matt. Wait a minute, I've heard, I've heard this story. I've seen this story. It's on the flash. <laughs> run, Barry, run! Jeez. Uh, uh, what, so did Frank Miller do it first? Of course. Uh, Jack is upset and hits Matt. I, I mean, I don't like Matt getting hit, but I do like that. You know, this sends Matt down a path to Matt down a path to learn the rules and laws. He's he, that's when he makes his. You know, it's like if Dad can break the rules, anyone can break the rules. That makes him a lawyer. And then he gets his butt broken. <laughs> oh. Uh, to see people held accountable. Yes, Matt spends his time studying. When he is picked on at school, he just stands there and takes it. Though he doesn't fight, he spends the time he isn't studying at the gym training. On a picture-perfect day, Matt sees the last thing he will ever see. A blind oh. man is crossing the street, and there's a truck heading straight to him. In a second, Matt reacts and jumps to push the man out of the way. The truck swerves, and the barrels in the back crash to the speed street, spilling the contents into Matt's eyes and on some turtles in the sewers. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> Matt is rushed to the hospital in much pain. Eventually, the pain goes away, but he is blind. The rest of his senses are heightened to superhuman levels. He is visited by a nun while in the hospital. Back at home, he overhears his father talking with representatives from the company whose chemicals ended up in Matt's eyes. They threaten him with exposing his, co his connection with the fixer. Matt is pitied by all, by all except for one, Stick. Stick, who is also blind, begins to train Matt on how to use his other senses. Matt excels and begins to be able to do things he couldn't do when he could see. Jack is jogging, training for his next fight. He has stopped by the fixer. The fixer tells him that he hasn't earned any of his knockouts, that he had been fixing his fights for a while now, setting him up for a big fall. He wants Jack to take a dive in his next fight so that he can make a bundle. During the fight, Jack is in, Jack is in his corner and one of the fixer's men come up to him and tell him to take a fall. He decides he's not going to and Jack knocks out his opponent. He knows his son is watching and he wants to show him to never quit. Jack walks out of the arena into an alley, waiting for him as Fixer and a number of his men. They beat Jack to within an inch of his life. He is bloodied and toothless, but he still offers up a smile. Fixer puts his gun in Jack's mouth and pulls the trigger. Damn. So, thoughts on... Well, you gotta stay out of those dark alleyways in any, any major city, apparently. Especially if you're a parent. <laughs> What I like about this issue is at the beginning where they really like emphasize like Matt's childhood. Yes. Like, you know, like a, like a classic, you know, New York City kid playing stickball in the street, breaking open the fire hydrant. Like, I really love that feel at the beginning of the issue. Exactly. The bubble gum. Like, it just, it's just everything's just really well plotted. And like I said, I mean, I like that we actually see the moment he decides to uh, become a lawyer. Yeah. I do like that. Um, Not a good one, just a lawyer. Well, yeah. <laughs> any, lawyer any type of lawyer will do. <laughs> he could have been a real estate lawyer for all we know. Seriously. <laughs> would have made more money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about that. It's not about that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, so. Wait, do you have any favorite uh, panels or anything? Um, I don't know about this. Um. I thought it interesting. I like the splash of him and Stick training across the rooftops. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! You get some good splash pages in this series. Yeah, the double splash of them running across. He's, playing, he's got a bow and arrow. I'm just like, calm down. That's somebody else's stick. 
<laughs> Hawk, I would like to have a word with you. <laughs> <clears throat> and I do like even before anything happens, he's you know first couple pages he's he's already in a mask. Yeah, <laughs> he loves the mask. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> oh yeah, we meant we made mention of it over on uh, Comic Capers. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing that ski mask as a kid. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I'm ready for issue two. Let's do it. All right. So issue two, November 93. Mm. Matt must identify the body of his father. He's able to get the sense of the killers. Mikhail and Gillian are drunk walking the streets. Matt taunts them and lures them into a dark alley. An hour later, a cop is standing over their beaten and bloody bodies. One of them mumbles to the cop that they are attacked by Jack Murdoch, that they had killed him. Next, Marcello and Slade are at the gym. Slade! Slade! <laughs> Slade is trading, hitting the heavy bag. The lights go out and Slade tries to find Marcello. He trips over his body, beaten on the floor. A spotlight shines down in the middle of the boxing ring and Matt Murdock is standing there with a mask on. He tosses his bat aside and Slade steps into the ring. Slade towers over him, but Matt takes out his knee and, with a roll of pennies in his hand, punches him in the face continuously. Quarters would have been As better. You do. Quarters would have been better. Should have been heated up pennies. That's how you do it. Actually, oh. it's a bag of hot nickels. That's what you want. Or just a sock of uh, pool balls. <laughs> <laughs> Any of these options will do. That's right, kids. Slate is out. The door opens and Fixer sees what is happening. He makes a run for it, telling his driver Angelo to get them out of there. Matt follows the car from the rooftops. Matt jumps on top of the car and the car crashes. Doesn't this always happen in Frank Miller stories? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing, apparently, that happens in New York. I'll go with it. I'll believe it. Matt, uh, Fixer has his gun out and points at Matt, but Matt just keeps walking toward him. Matt can hear the Fixer's heart. It's pounding and fluttering, and then it stops. Fixer is dead, and Angelo is the only one left. Matt tracks Angelo to a brothel. Matt jumps through the window and onto Angelo. Matt is attacked by a number of women there. Matt thrashes, trying to get free, and one of the women goes flying out the window to her death, which we, uh... Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> we talked about a little, yes, in, on Comic Capers 98, yes. Uh, Matt runs out horrified at what he has just done. He runs back to the gym, yelling for Stick, but Stick isn't there. Stick is a few blocks away, talking with Stone. He tells Stone that after the after this night's events, Matt has failed and is, is, uh, is of no use to him. One year later, Matt is attending Columbia University. He is consoling his roommate and friend, Franklin Foggy Nelson, who has been picked on by another student named Brad. Of course it's Brad. It's the, it's the male Karen. The next night, Brad... Is Actually, that would be Chad, but... <laughs> oh! No offense, that's what they call him. <laughs> the next night, Brad is found naked and tied up on the tennis courts with a warning to leave Foggy alone. The next morning, Brad apologizes to Foggy for the way he's been acting. A girl named Kathy hits on Matt, but he will have nothing of it and walks off the class. Later that night, after Foggy has fallen asleep, Matt gets dressed and takes to the rooftops. He's running wild there, dancing with the night. <laughs> Suddenly, he catches the scent of a woman up there with him. She takes off. Oh, and who is he, Al Pacino? Boom! Hey, oh! <laughs> Uh, she takes off me chases. He follows her through the park. She has left articles of clothing as a trail. As we um, s don't fall for it, homie. <laughs> I know. You see that underwear hanging on that branch? <laughs> no. Uh, the cops arrive and detain him. He remembers the woman who fell to her death and decides to follow the rules and not run. They see no girl and realize that he is blind. Electra is getting dressed. Watching on and smiling. The cops tell him it was dumb to be walking through the park at that time of night alone. The next day, Matt is walking with Foggy. Electra pulls up in her car and without a word from either her or Matt, he jumps into her car, leaving Foggy behind, who's upset that she almost ran them over. She's driving like a maniac and Matt likes it. It makes him feel alive. She stops and they get out. They are standing at the edge of a cliff. She tells Matt that they are two of a kind, different from everyone else. They live on the brink, drawn to the edge, and sometimes over. She leans back over the cliff, and Matt is again reminded of the woman who who he knocked to her death. So, that electric crazy. Oh, you know the crazy ones. Well, yes. Yes, I do, little Hellfire. <laughs> hey, I resemble that comment. 
oh, come on, miss, I skydived on a first date. Yeah, I mean, I've been in like 80 car accidents and I'm still alive. Whatever. You are <laughs> driving crazy. I, crazy no, stunts. Oh, I'm a very responsible driver, sir. That's your new Other people. I live in Florida, sir. That's your new nickname, Electra. <laughs> Better than Karen. Um, This issue, I don't really care so much about because, like, I felt like Foggy should have been developed a little bit more or their relationship a little bit. It's just kind of like glossed over. Y'all know I ship Foggy and Matt. Y'all can hashtag deal with that. So. Oh my. <laughs> I mean, we get more of him in the upcoming issues and stuff. We do. But like, I feel like that the college experience is very formative for him and we kind of just gloss over it. That's all. Yeah. But still a good story. Still great artwork. Love the Electra thing. It's a little, um, it's a little John Byrne-esque, but it's fine. <laughs> Oh, what, just uh, what Electra getting naked just, while he's yeah, chasing just her? Yeah, random nakedness ensues. <laughs> and, meanwhile, and meanwhile, what, they're like, she's driving with the, in a convertible with the top down in the middle of winter. It's snowing like crazy, and she's, I don't think she's even wearing shoes, is she? She's, she's not. <laughs> Actually, that's some of my favorite panels, honestly, so. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. What, that short, tight skirt and uh, the top, yeah. Of course, that'd be your favorite little Elvar. <laughs> what, that one? Yeah, that one. I also like the 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 um the take on this is where we belong, always on the brink. Yeah, and again another great splash page of him jumping yes. over rooftops. I like I like the aerial the aerial um acrobatics of it all. Exactly. Like they they really like lean into that whole daredevil thing. The ninja and the ninja training, yeah. Yeah, not unlike some other person that wears trunks. Hey <laughs> They're black trunks, nevertheless, but... Mm -hmm. Alright, so... Ready for the next one? Let's do it. Uh, alright, so... This is a great cover, number three. Yeah, oh yeah. Just her fighting those goons at the bottom there. From December 1993. Uh, so... Electra's falling from the cliff. She crashes through the ice and into the water. Matt jumps in after her. He is trying to find her underwater, but cannot. He, he rushes to the surface to get her breath. As he does, he can hear Electra laughing as she speeds away in her car. Matt gets home drenched and, drenched and pissed. Foggy tells him where she lives. That sounds like you. You leave a guy in a frozen lake. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Matt, sh Matt shows up at Electra's mansion. Whoa. Might have lost love. Matt shows up at Electra's mansion. There's a party going on and security is tight. Matt manages to sneak through the grounds and get in, gets into Electra's room. He feels all of her first place trophies for swimming, track, Aikido, Kendo, Karate. Matt starts down the hall and a dog charges him. He kicks the dog. Alright. Lilith is back. Hit the button. No. Okay. Armadillos. Oh, okay. But yeah, I just they said... They demand my attention. I apologize. That's okay. Yes, no. Uh, he just snuck into the... He's, he was in Electra's room feeling up all her stuff. All her first place... that's not hashtag creepy. All her first place stuff. Yes, and then he starts down the hall and a dog charges him. He kicks the dog. <gasps> Matt, Matt, Michael... Matthew Michael Murdoch. Shame on you. Well, at least he only puts the dog like on the floor probably. Kicks a guard through a window. <laughs> Him and Windows. I think that's his arch nemesis. But no, sh probably. Is that why? Wait a minute. Is that why Wilson Fisk is always wistfully staring out a out a window? <gasps> uh, sad music playing. Beneath the window is a room of glass where the party is being held. Electra is playing the piano. The guard crashes through the glass ceiling and right onto the piano. Electra never stops playing. That should be her first clue. The guards take aim and fire up at the window where Matt is standing. He takes off running. Matt is upset with himself for breaking the rules again. Matt is shot as he makes his mistake. Matt is back in his apartment. He's cleaning up his gunshot wound, blocking out his senses to keep conscious. When he stops the bleeding and lets the world back in, he realizes he isn't alone, and it isn't Foggy. Foggy is at the door, locked out. Matt says to give him a minute. Twenty minutes later, Foggy is sitting at the door and Electra walks out. Foggy walks in and the place is a mess and Matt is sitting on the floor with a smile on his face. She's uh, really a very nice girl, Foggy. Very nice girl. <laughs> Just a little rough. 
Electra's in the city. She sees a group of five gangbangers who she overhear who she overhears bragging about what they've done to innocent women. She lures them into a dark alley. The block off the way uh, they block the way out and she begins to undress. She promises not to scream. Two of them go to hold her while another pulls out a knife to cut off what little clothes she has left on. She <laughs> Okay. Well, she's again, that's her thing. <laughs> that's true. Uh, okay. This, this, the summary says it's not me. She kicks him in his junk and knees him in the jaw, snapping a vertebrae and killing him instantly. The others attack, but eventually she kills them all. Electra and Matter. Voices won't be happy about that. Oh, no. They even says, yeah, she hears these voices who want innocent victims, but, you know, at least she, like, takes out, like, evildoers. Electra and Matter training together, falling more and more in love. Matt can't even concentrate in class. One night, Stick wakes Matt up and th- threatens. Don't you hate that one? Stick wakes you up at night. <laughs> ah, tells Matt to stay away from Electra, that she is dangerous. Matt doesn't listen, though. Unfortunately, not out long after, Electra's father is killed and she must leave Matt. He doesn't understand. He only knows his heart is broken. Uh, meanwhile, Don Rigoletto is meeting with his men. They are complaining that they are being, that they are being outcompeted. Rigoletto refuses to murder children or cater to unholy perversions, nor will they flood their streets with crack cocaine. He is upset and sends his men away. Wilson Fisk comes up behind him. Wilson! Or Oh, Mr. Wilson! Comes up behind him and begins to give him a massage as Rigoletto tries to relax. Kingpin then snaps his neck and takes his place, ready to become the kingpin of the city. We built this city! So, wait, so, so... So Fisk was like a massage boy. That's how he got in position to become kingpin of crime. Only in a Frank Miller story. Swear to God. <laughs> oh yeah, there's always sex in a Frank Miller story. Although I'll allow it for Catwoman. True. It makes sense. It makes sense with the. Whip. Oh yeah, with the whip. This one was um interesting. I yeah. like this take on Electra. Oh, you do. I do. I like, Wild, free, crazy. Yeah, I like the whole scene at her house, but the rest of it seemed to move a little, little fast. It, like the pace seemed to really pick up. Well, the, the, all the, you know, that's honest to goodness truth. This is why, like, I feel like they should have just put it all. Maybe because it was meant to be a graphic novel. Yes. I feel like the story is very fast paced. It moves through the story very swiftly. And again, modern comics maybe could never, to a little bit of a detriment. Honestly, modern comics could never. <laughs> oh, this would be twelve all day, every day. Maxi series. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But See, yeah, I like all the Daredevil and Elektra uh, panels together. Oh, yeah. They even have matching, you know, underwear. So. Aw. And he's still got wrestling. his little bullet wound. So. Oh, yep. <laughs> Continuity, man. But she's another one, man. That hair could be like its own living entity. Maybe she's related to Medusa from the Inhumans and we don't know it, okay? <laughs> But I find it weird, like like her father's killed by terrorists, but we don't see anything about that. Just later, she's like, oh, my father's dead. Well, again, she's a woman in a Frank Miller story. Mm. No need to flesh her out. We don't need your backstory. I can, I can tell the not show. It's fine. Well, I mean, to be fair, we've, like you were saying, even Foggy really doesn't get uh, fleshed out. It's basically just Matt and like we get a little on Wilson Fisk. That's about it. Oh, and Stan. Exactly. You know, we get like the stick stuff. And this is basically just something for them to build off of and spin things out at this point, too. Yeah. It's still like jumping the jumping on point for new readers, basically. Yeah. But no, the whole thing with the, you know, it should have been, a, it really should have been a graphic novel because the trade I have, they really don't tell you when. It reads like a, yeah. It doesn't tell you when one issue ends and the other one begins. So, yeah, if I wasn't reading these summaries, I really wouldn't even know where these issues end, so. And yeah, it really works. It works as like a one big story instead of split up. Yeah. But it'd be like $50 in today's money. <laughs> exactly. I bought this for fifteen ninety five. I have actually all the individual issues. So. Oh, do you? Mm-hmm. Cool. Be- and I have to I have to definitely get number one signed before, you know, Frank Miller kicks the bucket. He's getting on in years. So I would lo- I would like to have the individual issues. The co- I found them in a um off of eBay in a big uh comic box actually like you know the big bundles they have that yeah. you don't know what you're getting so kids kids get your get all your Daredevil comics now before he hits the MCU 
Seriously, guys, they're gonna those back issues are gonna be ridiculous. Almost as ridiculous as a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles last Ronin. Last time I saw the, my comic book shop is actually selling like the number one issue for like forty bucks now, and I'm like, gotta get it on the pull list. Hey, that's hey, that, hey, that's nothing compared to Daredevil twenty five, where uh, spoilers, Electra's the new Daredevil. I mean, what's that going for a hundred, a hundred and fifty now or something? Really? Oh yeah. Huh. I know when it for like the day it came out, they said people are already selling it for a hundred. And last I heard, I think it it, it was up to like one fifty or something. See, spe- speculating comic books is what kills the industry every single time. So mm-hmm. I don't know when, when we as comic book fans are not going to learn our lesson, but hopefully soon. And they're not as they're they're not worth as much. Yeah, anymore, they're not as valuable as they used to be anymore. Because like last Ronin, I get it because it's like you know Eastman and Laird are actually like back doing their thing. So I well, get that whole hype. But. Which is physically too, because it's like remember when we had the cheap paper, those things with the grades, you degrade, know. Yeah. Now, as long as you keep them flat, those things aren't going to degrade. Yeah, people don't know that. I think people really actually don't know that anymore. Because right. people still get graded comics, and I'm just like, um, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, Jan. Sure. You're, uh, you're, it's, it costs like anywhere between like thirty to fifty bucks to actually have the the book graded and put in the slab with the sticker. If you don't know that, yeah. Well, well, like some, pro tip for comic books. <laughs> I mean, well, I think a lot of the people who, you know, the, a lot of the speculators don't, you know, aren't like big fans. Don't they don't yeah, know. Like any trading <laughs> community. I know. They, That's they, why it's called speculation. <laughs> so they don't know that, you know, they, the books don't degrade. They're not worthless. Oh, my Lord. Unless you have alternative comics, those are still printed on newsprint. <laughs> That's true. Again, lower the prices. Give us some newsprint. Yeah. That's just what we need. We need more speculating in the comic book industry. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, uh, next issue. All right. Issue four, Daredevil the Man Without Fear, issue four from January 1994. Oh, but also shout out to Wilson, Wilson Fisk putting the rose in his lapel. Just, you know, tuck that, put that feather in your cap for later. Exactly. All right. So... Kingpin builds his criminal this empire. This one is my favorite issue, not gonna lie. From oh, the cover really? To the ending. I love this one. Kingpin builds his criminal empire alongside his mercenaries and his right hand man, Larks. <laughs> Matt graduates law school and gets a job at a large law firm in Boston, in Boston. They send him to New York for a case where he reminisces about his childhood. He's stopped by a group of muggers, but decides but deciding that they are no different than the bullies that taunted him as a child, he fights them and hurts them all severely. He then returns to his old father's old gym, now abandoned, where he meets a young girl named Mickey. She reminds Matt of his younger self. Mickey, Mickey, you're so fine. Oh no, no I don't think we ever learned her real name because th- when when she says her name's she says her name's Mickey and she's an orphan and it doesn't Matt say yeah hypersense to say those are both lies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Street kids can have their own names. Leave her alone, Matt. Yes, yes, these these young kids can make up their own names. A little hellfire. <laughs> It's a stage name. Thank you very much. For tax purposes. <laughs> oh, it's a tax shelter. Okay. <laughs> uh, after weeks in New York, Matt runs into his former roommate, Foggy Nelson, and they catch up. He helps Foggy with a case against a slumlord, and Matt remembers that he became a lawyer because he wanted to do good. Kingpin orders his men to cut costs in their film the di- film division. The orders... <laughs> The order goes down. Rabbit the, ears. <laughs> it's not in the. Uh, I I added the rabbit ears. Film. The order goes down the chain of command until two drug addict criminals are ordered to kidnap a young girl. They kidnap Mickey. Matt leaves for the airport. We didn't see that coming. Yeah, I know. Matt leaves for the airport so he can go back to Boston, but decides to say goodbye to Mickey first. Wait, does he own a pizza parlor? <laughs> I know where you're going with that, Love Hellfire. I thought that were Boston pizza owners. Matt Kona does not appreciate any of this little hellfire. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, upon re- he decides that he's on the way to the airport, decides to stop to see Mickey first. Upon reaching the gym, he finds her hat on the ground, which he had never known her to take off. He uses the... Ad- wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what is this little hellfire? <laughs> I know. She sleeps in it. She drinks in it. She- wait, they've been working out for weeks. So the whole time in the gym, she never took the hat off? Guess not. Uh, he uses the address in her hat to find her home. The criminals call the home to ransom her. One of the criminals calls her boss to tell the him that the kid is being ransomed against his wishes. Kingpin sends Larks to set things straight. Matt watches Mickey's father deliver the ransom, the money, 
the ransom money in a drop off. He waits until the criminal takes the money and then follows him. Larks kills the criminal and sees Matt. Kingpin deduces that this must have been a vigilante. Mickey is taken to a warehouse where several children are being kept, but Matt follows Larks. He moves silently through the facility, taking out all the guards and ta- sabotaging the getaway car. All right, little hellfire. Um, <laughs> uh, this one, I, you know, honestly, this is the thing. I feel like, um, and for better or for worse, take this as a neutral statement, please. Uh, this wasn't as violent as I was expecting it to be from Frank Miller. No. Do you think? And they- I think that's kind of why I like it so much. Like, it's very, he's very subdued in his in his over the top ways. Do you know what I mean? Do you and think- it just kind of. Makes me a little sad that like a lot, not a lot more people can rein Frank Miller in. Looking at EDC, I was going to say, do you think that was a mandate to tone it down a little bit? But I mean, it would have been kind of perfect to be over the top because of this, the particular way that he was um, presenting the underbelly of New York. Yeah, it well, feels I, very reserved and restrained, and I, I kind of appreciate that. I love, I love you. You're just like, oh yeah, it's not that you know. He's standing there over those street punks. He beat there's like blood but dripping off his Miller. it could be a million times more graphic that's true he puts the graphic in graphic novel okay <laughs> suck it connor, suck it, connor. <laughs> there we but go yeah no I, like i said this is my favorite issue it's like you know he's like you know he's trying to give back to his community as it were in the best way he knows how to <laughs> exactly oh i could just see a young little so far reading this oh, i could be mickey <laughs> No, no, I would always be mad. <laughs> Although I wouldn't be a terrible lawyer if I wanted to be a lawyer. So I told you, you're Electra. Again, another splash page of him standing in the rain on the rooftops. Although you know what I really do miss what? is like um the gothic iconography of the gargoyles. Mm. That is the one yes. thing that is missing from this story, though. Exactly. That 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 that's like Batman, you know, in rooftops and gargoyles. I, I feel like these two characters are definitely synonymous with that. So. Oh, and look, that Billy Club is still that the uh, the nightstick's still there in their locker all these years. Aw. Aww. Well, you can't remember your combination. <laughs> I know. He just like kicks the locker in. I can relate. <laughs> And then this whole thing when, you know, Larks is shooting at him on the staircase, that kind of reminded me of like a scene from Born Again. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if that was intentional or not. He'll never admit it. <laughs> well, no, I just wonder if like Romito like was inspired by Born Again. Or if that was like an intentional shout out to Born Again. Because Frank Miller might just said, yeah, put him on a staircase. But <laughs> oh, my Lord. Dressing Mickey up in that dress. Jeez. Hates every minute of it. I can relate. <laughs> Ew, a dress. All right. So, you ready for the last one? Oh, yeah. It's got classic Daredevil on the cover. <laughs> a big red suit and a small yellow suit. All right. So, yes, the last one from February 94. Hey, look. It's that guy from the TV show. <laughs> what? You know how um in, um in Daredevil on the TV show he starts off like that. Oh like, yeah. The... All right, so all right, little hellfire, control yourself. Matt blows up the dock, causing everyone to rush out to find to find him. He fights them all. Fights them all. Fight me, nerds! <laughs> Fight me, bullies! <laughs> oh my! Fight me, nerd! <laughs> Three more men in a truck chase him off while Larks smuggles Mickey out of the building and into a car. Several policemen show up and tackle Matt, put him in handcuffs, and throw him into a police car. Again, is the, isn't this Batman year one? Marvel nerds don't know. Oh. That's at Love Hellfire. At the same time, Mickey screams for Matt, not realizing that this allows him to hear her exact location. Matt escapes and steals the police car as Larks kills a taxi driver and steals the taxi cab. Matt and Larks engage in a car chase until they crash, and Larks takes Mickey into a building. Matt follows them in. Larks threatens to shoot Mickey, but Matt simply repeats the phrase, I don't want to kill you. Let her go. Larks tries to shoot Matt, but he deflects the bullet with his walking stick. After one more warning, Larks shoots again, and Matt deflects the bullet back at Larks, killing him. He's got magic power, see? Yeah, he's, he's gonna magic. get you. <laughs> That's what Mickey thinks. Kingpin hears of the Daredevil and finds himself worried about this new character. 
Matt decides to stay in New York and start a law firm with Foggy. Stick walks by, only warning Matt not to get cocky. Matt jumps across the rooftops, uh, rooftops dressed in his Daredevil costume for the first time. He sewed it together by filling the colors, see? <laughs> Who knows what it's Never like. forget! Know your history! Love your roots! Yeah, wasn't the yellow suit in honor of his father? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can't be mad about that. And I shall be a daredevil father. I, I do like the interesting take about Wilson Fisk, though. I do. Yeah. I wish they would have followed up on that. Like, he honestly... Kingpin, need, like, out of all the villains in, like, the Marvel's rogues gallery, he is the least fleshed out. More, less so than the Vulture, even. Honestly. True. Because it's just that recycled, you know, tidbit about him. Well, he He's did, a gangster. He did get he a wants le- to be a legitimate businessman. Well, they did, they did say he was friends for years with that 616 Miles Morales. Yeah. Like, they met but in prison. That, that's not interesting. <laughs> that's a cap out. <laughs> Hashtag fight me. I don't know what to tell you. Spend this, spend this, spend this. Exactly. And y'all know I love me some business Miles Morales, but there's some questionable content still. But anyway, yeah, I I mean, I love how, yeah, like Kingpin knew he was a vigil, you know, Daredevil was a vigilante. Well, Matt was a vigilante because he's like, yeah, all the police are on the payroll and none of my rivals would well, dare. New York City's full of them, to be fair. Oh, yeah. What, this point? Well, I mean, they're not really talking about it, but yeah, forever and for always. It's just one of those things in the Marvel Universe always has been and always will be. Is this another menace like that Jameson talking about? He wishes. <laughs> he wishes he could get the press coverage by me. But I mean, yeah, some great fight scenes like, you know, get that splash page. and I wonder if those are wrestling shoes because, you know, those are shoes are very quiet. Mm. Very fitting for an urban ninja, if you will. They look they look bigger like sneakers. Do they make sh- like wrestling shoes that big? I know they look pretty flat, so that's what I was mm. asking. I don't know. Maybe because if those are Adidas, Adidas are kind of squeaky. Uh, as an Adidas fan, I can say that. <laughs> yeah, Adidas are kind of squeaky, bro. <laughs> He's a ninja. Maybe he can wear any shoes. Well, oh, touche. But again, yes, you know, he pulls the year one and, you know, gets arrested by the cops and has to break out of the cop car. Or, you know, pulls a joker, whatever you like. <laughs> whatever you like. And there's all, hey, and there's always a kid to rescue at the end. This time it was Mickey and year one it was uh, Gordon's son. Exactly. James, James Gordon Jr. <laughs> yeah, because that turned out well. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Batman. <laughs> Dick some... senses regards. Oh, uh, thank you, little Hellfire. You're welcome. Uh-uh. Feel free to use it on Nightwing News. <laughs> well, yeah. But no, this is like I said. It's classic. It's epic. It's seminal. It's essential. Exactly. Great, great artwork. Like sometimes, you know, look, y'all can get mad at me. Sometimes John Romita Jr. rest on his laurels and gets a little lazy. But that is not the case with this one. I feel I feel the passion for this project out of the junior. So just I and it's kind of an odd team up for me too. I would have never like pegged those two to work together. Because yeah. they're they have both have very big egos. So Well, I wonder if they picked uh, uh Ramita Jr. because he had worked on the regular Daredevil book with Anna Senti for a while. That's a good point. So they knew he they knew he could draw some Daredevil. Yeah, they, that this this story I've pulled the absolute best uh, out of him in my mm-hmm. personal opinion. Oh yeah, so. and again, it's like you know when you get a good uh, inker and stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah, the art in this is is great. Again, it's still, I think it's still you know it be become a classic. A story has to have good story and good art. Yeah, it has to like like it's like I said, it was the perfect storm of storytelling for comic books. Yeah. It just came together. But yeah, and you know, honestly, a lot of um older critics that I uh, like read, they they like to think of the '90s as the low point for comic creativity, and I just have to like totally disagree, and that just kind of shows that they're total boomers <laughs> when they say things like that. Because I feel like the '90s was just like a really a rejuvenating renaissance. Like, yeah, we had Death of Superman and Nightfall and things like that, but it re- really did rejuvenate the um comic industry 
love it or hate it. And I think that it's just so disingenuous to say that it was a creative low point. I just oh. see a lot of older um, reviewers say things like that. Oh, I know. I mean, it's just like, you know, just because... And it's we- definitely not the nostalgia for me because I love Golden Age and I can call it out for the cheesy, corny <laughs> stuff that I, I love. Um, but I don't think that me loving 90s stuff is nostalgia. I think it's kind no. of not even, I think it's very objective and not subjective at all that it's some of the best storytelling came out of the 90s. No, I mean, there was good stuff in the 90s just because some of the, some of the stuff was ultra violent and, you know, skimpy costumes and all that. I mean, it's comic books, it's fantasy fulfillment. And, you know, you have to update with the times for every generation or get left behind looking at you comics in 2020. And find me any year. I mean, you can pick out good and bad in any year in comics. Yeah. So I, that's just something that I brought up when I was uh, doing the research for this is that a lot of people were like, oh, we're so shocked. You know, this, is, <laughs> this comes out of the dreck of the 90s, the early 90s at that, you know? Exactly. I'm just like, hey, now. Hey, now. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's kind of like shocking to go back and like um, read old reviewers that are like, you can tell they're super old. <laughs> yeah. But no. Very curmudgeonly. But then this trade I got, yeah, they said when they went from the graphic novel to miniseries, they had to take a couple pages out. Like, there's a page of, like, Matt following Mickey's father into the subway, and then there's Matt hanging onto the kidnappers, the roof of his car and stuff. Because that's his thing. That's what he loves to do. <laughs> and, of course, we got, like, a big uh, close-up of the kingpin. Oh, they, yeah, that, that's great. That's Smo- a great poster. S- smoking his fancy cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I didn't, didn't want to point it out. I didn't want to be that person, but yeah. Smoking a fancy cigarette. Or like a holder. <laughs> Too good to get nicotine on his fingertips, see? I was going to say, that fancy cigarette holder, who's think he has the red skull? <laughs> what is that, a Virginia Slim in there? <laughs> Newport. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, uh, excellent. If you don't, if you've never read it, I think you should read it. Yes. Um, if you're, if you've never known where to start with Daredevil, this is a great one. I think it's highly recommended. It's probably like number one on most people's list, I think. Especially if you're not too familiar with, like, the origin story. I mean, yeah, th- I think this is definitely a must-read. Yeah, and I think, honestly, like I said, I think it was definitely written as a jumping-on point because, like, it is not too fleshed out. If you really want to know more, you can either read back issues or continue reading from that point forward. You just have the general gist of things. Exactly. It was a big... So, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is an A+. plus. Yeah, it's a Frank Miller story, but it's an A+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, again, this is one of the good Frank Miller stories before he went off the rails. Yes. Again. You know, I'm still waiting on that next Sin City. That's all that I'm saying. Calling them out now. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce I, Willis is old. Give me my next Sin City movie. I mean, like, you called out the noir feel and stuff, and I, I think that works better for even Daredevil than even Batman. Absolutely. Although, like I said, very similar with the, you know, especially their uh, origins with the dark gangster gritty underbelly of their city. You know, even though, you know, Batman's parents are, like, rich and die in an alley, you know. Jack stands up for what he believes in and gets kind of killed, you know? Yeah, because I don't, I mean, I don't know if it's because he's more of a known quantity or because he is the rich kid, but yeah, I think I think the Frank Frank Miller works even better on Daredevil than he does on Batman. Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, his dad was already in the underbelly, so he was already underbelly adjacent, you know? Oh, yeah. And he, you know, he grew up poor in the streets playing stickball. Exactly. <laughs> it's just so much more authentic and believable. You see all the crime and corruption and your your parent loses a life in that kind of manner on top of living that life. It definitely affects you kind of more. You're not as sheltered in your big ivory tower in Gotham Palisades, you know. <laughs> and of course he's going to drift to like stick and stuff and like look for like a father figure or like a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, you have your sense of your, your sight taken from you at a young age. It's just a lot of trauma. And that's the thing about Matt is, like, they just constantly dump on this kid. Like, he just can't catch a break in his life. Exactly. So I think, yeah, you feel a lot more sympathy and just, like, you know, you just really root for that character a lot more. Sometimes you just kind of want Bruce to feel. You're just like, eh. <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt, you're like, come on! This is the story of Job in comic book form. Give the kid a break. And Matt's like the underdog. You know, Bruce has all his fancy toys. Matt usually just has like a billy club. He's lucky to even have an apartment. <laughs> you know? Especially when they get blown up. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. I'm so excited to be talking Daredevil. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Me too. It's just so many great things to, to bring up about the character. So, I look forward to it. All right. So, should we tell everyone what the what's coming up what are we reading next because i haven't even peeked at the schedule yet oh my all right so 
kind of on a theme. Yes, uh, next episode in two weeks, we'll be covering Daredevil Yellow. Oh, nice. By Jeff Loeb, yes. Tim Sale. Oh, yeah. Jeff Loeb. So, Jeff Loeb has entered the chat. We haven't talked about Jeff Loeb in a long time. I know. Yeah, <laughs> what so. Was that, like, Long Halloween or something? <laughs> I think so. But, yeah, so it, it, it'll go a little bit more, well, it kind of hits a, just a little bit on the origin, but then it co- starts covering those first couple Daredevil issues. Yeah, it's a, it's a little more fleshed out. Definitely. So, yeah, you'll get like, you know, remember kids, what was it, Daredevil 2 or 3? Uh, he fought Electro. <laughs> and, Suck it, Peter. <laughs> oh, whoa, phrasing. And uh, and for those of you who haven't read those early issues, yes, we'll get the, also, they'll uh, retell the first appearance of the Purple Man. Ooh, Jessica Jones would like to have a word with <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's like, no, nah, you can have him. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, awesome. yeah, coming up in February, we'll, have, we'll be covering the original Daredevil number seven, fe- featuring the first appearance of the red suit and Namor the Submariner. It was for me, guys. Fill through that in for me. <laughs> That's right. And maybe Ray Ray. <laughs> That's all right. And of course, we have to finish uh, February off with Daredevil two forty five. Featuring a guest appearance by the Black Panther. Because you know it's February. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, can never please her. Um, I just want to say that it's a new year and a new devil to get to know. So we look forward to you guys joining us on our journey. Yes. And please send us your feedback. Just general daredevil feedback. Feedback on the issues. I mean, you could send us feedback on Man Without Fear. We'll read it next time. Definitely. And don't forget to join the Facebook group. That's right. We got a Facebook page. We got a Facebook group. That's right. I can't believe Facebook actually lets you make a, a, another page. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag petty. Well, the page, I just reused an old one, but yes. Uh, ah. But yes, go join yes, the page, which is the name of this podcast. But the Facebook group, the Devil uh, Blind Justice, the Daredevil fan group, please join us there just started yesterday so hey get in on the ground floor all right so send us your thoughts on this issue or any upcoming ones email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737 that's 614-38capes and i'll have to update the uh, link tree because yes you can you'll be able to find uh, links to all the facebook we're on twitter uh instagram i Links to all of our various uh, social medias for all of our shows. Links to our YouTube channel where you can watch this video. Please go. Uh, Wait a minute. Hmm. Phil, we just traded in one guy in a red suit that's Spider-Man adjacent for another guy in a red suit that's Spider-Man adjacent. Yes. So be sure to also check out Ultimate Spider-Cast. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's what I said. Yes, our various other shows, Ultimate Spider-Cast. Uh, we even do that. The DC side of the street. We do some Batman. Some Superman, some Flash. Batman. That's right. Uh, over on Capes and Lunatics, we uh, Nightwing News. So, so yeah. Something for everyone. Oh, and yes, everything. Stuff for everyone, including, including a Quasar podcast. What about our Quasar podcast, The Quantum Zone? What about our Quasar podcast? <laughs> With a real professor, Will Allred, and stand-up comedian, Matt Kona. <laughs> Suck it, Charlie. <laughs> Suck it, Ezra. Anyway, yeah, so find links to everything we do all in one place. That's Linktree, L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes in Lunatics. And of course, please re- uh, help us support our sponsors, Tweaked Audio. Get yourself some headphones, kids. Help yourself. It's never too early to treat yourself, fool. Treat yourself. <laughs> hear the music like matt murdoch hears the music with tweaked audio and of course be like daredevil himself and hunt a killer michelle gray needs our help and you should stay in the house and have family fun time with an escape room in a box that's right and use the code southgate for both of those for a handy dandy discount a coupon what a coupon a coupon a reusable coupon <laughs> anyway yes and for those of you who love the read go pick up pod life the book Volume 1, now digital and paperback. Learn the ins and outs of podcasting from the experts. Nope, not saying it this week. (laughs) And the Robert Southgate. Anyway, so yes, so 
you can pick that up uh, digital or paperback. Uh, audiobook is coming soon. I don't think the Braille is coming. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what the audiobook is for. True, true. And Volume 2 is coming, so pick that up on Amazon. And when you do, and when you go and pick up your Daredevil merch on Amazon, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the Devil You Know, our various shows, uh, the Southgate Media Group Network, and that man in the back, massaging men for money, Rob, a Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain. You're fired, Phil. So says Master Doom. <laughs> Please kick me in the pants, and you will find out I am right so much more often than I'm wrong. Yeah. Why did your eye drift over to my box? Lil Hellfire. Um, if you nerds want to hang out with me on the interwebs, find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire, on Instagram for puppies and smoothies at Lil Hellfire 86, and for the memes at Lil Hellfire 69, both on Instagram and TikTok. A uh, duh. I'm thirsty for it, bro. <laughs> she, lo- she loves the social medias, kids. <laughs> Not really. I'm, I'm trying to be really good about it this year, though. Gimme, so. gimme. I know. She, she'll, she'll retweet every TV show, but not our not our fabulous podcast. I retweet when I get on Twitter. That's how you know I've been on Twitter when you see me retweeting everything. I know. Cut, bro. All right, so. <clears throat> that's right. There no podcast. That's not a waste of butter. <laughs> see, kids, she actually. If you like, don't get it, oh, you what will. a waste of butter. <laughs> Oh, what a waste of butter. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Again, bi-weekly Daredevil. Come back in two weeks for Daredevil Yellow. But in the meantime, next week we'll be covering, I believe, uh, for Comic Capers 99, Green Lantern Emerald Twilight. So come for the daredevil, stay for everything else. And again, send your feedback. We'd love feedback. Come back next time. We may have feedback from our Australian friend Ray. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We're global. Great global enterprise. Legitimate business. Ah, so yes, come back next time. Ooh, I'll take a look at Outro. Alright, kids, come back next time. And remember, justice is swift and blind. And it's better to get with the devil you know than the devil you don't.